of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Uh, good morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome to parishioners from St. Edward's Golders Green, but also others who may be watching this recording of Mass on Sunday the 18th of October 2020, and it's the 29th Sunday in the Church's ordinary time. We come together to thank God who has chosen us to be his very own, to render to God, as Jesus says today, what belongs to God. Today is World Mission Sunday. We pray for the spread of the gospel throughout the world. Let's pause now for a moment to ask for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whom he has taken by his right hand to subdue, subdued nation before him and strip the loins of kings, to force gateways before him that their gates be closed no more. It is for the sake of my servant Jacob of Israel, my chosen one, that I have called you by your name, conferring a title through do, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, unrivaled. There is no other God besides me. Though you do not know me, I am you that men may know from the rising of the setting of the sun that apart from me, all is nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading is from the first book of Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus and Timothy, to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, wishing you grace and peace. We always mention you in our prayers and thank God for you all and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, worked for love and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers, that God loves you and that you have been chosen because when we brought the good news to you, it came to you not only as words, but as power and as the Holy Spirit and as utter conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went away to work out how between them they could trap Jesus in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him, together with the Herodians, to say, Master, we know you are an honest man and teach the way of God in an honest way and that you are not afraid of anyone, because a man's rank means nothing to you. Tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice and replied, You hypocrites, why do you set this trap for me? Let me see the money you pay the tax with. They handed him a denarius and he said, Whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's, they replied. He then said to them, very well, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I promise that this is not an advert for our contactless device, which is in the church now. I know that some of you have found it and have used it um, down there on the side um, as you go out. We had a few problems with it over the, the last few weeks and we had to send it back and it was changed, etc., etc. But a number of parishes in the diocese are now trialing these devices and so we are part of that, that trial. Now it, with, there are dangers of course oh, when you start using credit cards and debit cards is it's so easy just to tap the, uh, the machine and away the money goes and you've hardly noticed that it's gone and it may not in fact be in your account to go anyway. Um, there's something about coins and, and notes which have a reality about them and they, they make, make sure that you don't go beyond what you really can spend. But we've learnt over the last month or so that this is probably the way things are going. We're using less and less cash. Um, talking about the reality of, of, of money in, in your pocket or in your hand, sometimes you can be caught out and it's a way of controlling things. Uh, this has happened to me a couple of times before I really got used to using a credit card. I went shopping in a supermarket and got to the checkout and realized that I didn't actually have enough money to pay for the goods that were going into my basket. And really embarrassing, I had to take things off because I couldn't pay for it. And there's something about money in that sense 
that you don't spend more than you've got, and it, it, it serves as, as a function. But we know that the, the way things are going, that's, uh, that's, that's going to lose its, its power. I guess the next thing will be your card will be refused, in which case the whole thing gets, gets thrown out. Whereas, of course, if you've got coins and cash and, and notes, you can actually limit things according to what you've got. However, this wasn't a problem in the day of our Lord. You, when you wanted to pay for something, you either had to barter with something of equivalent uh, value, or you did a service, or you used the coins of the realm. And the people who were quizzing Jesus, they knew that this was an issue they could, they could take up with our Lord, because he was a devout Jew living under the Roman occupation, and of course using the, the, the coinage that was under the, the Roman emperor. And that would have had some implications for a devout Jew, not wanting to, um, to, to be sucked into the, to the way of the empire. Now, all coins, and it was true then and it's true now, all coins and in fact all notes that we use regularly, they all bear an image. In his day, it would have been the, the emperor. In our day, it's the queen and uh, she goes, she's the kind of ultimate authority for the, for the issuing of, the, of the, the currency. Now, in our Lord's day, that wasn't the only thing that would have been marked with an image because slaves, too, at that time, they were branded, branded with the mark of their owner so that everybody could tell who they belong to. Now, there's an echo of this in our baptism ceremony. When a, a baby is brought into the church and introduced, at the very beginning of the ceremony, the priest makes the sign of the cross on the baby's forehead and invites the parents and godparents to do the same. And also with adult catechumens, if you've seen this ritual here in the church, at the very beginning as they're introduced, we make the sign of the cross all over their body, on their hands and their feet, their, their eyes, their mouth, their nose. They're kind of covered with the cross. Now, many of the early Christians were slaves, and they would have realized the significance of that marking with the sign of the cross, because it indicated that they no longer belonged to a human master, they belong to God. They were his, his possession. And this was extremely significant for them. Now, that story is one that's in its, in its culture and time. And we can, we can understand it because we too use coins and we, we know what goes through our hands. I wonder whether in, in days to come, whether when people don't use coins, whether they'll be able quite to relate to this story as, as we can. But let's just continue the image of, of, the, of the, the mark that's been made upon the, uh, upon the person. We now bear the mark of the cross. It shows that we belong to Christ. In a very real sense, we have become ourselves the coinage, the coinage of the kingdom of heaven. God has given his authority to us, he's marked us. We are the ones through whom he's going to guarantee the value of the transactions and the goods of the kingdom. This is a, a huge act of trust by God. He wants to use us as the currency of his kingdom. He wants to work through us to bring about all those things that should happen in the kingdom of heaven. Are we ready? Are we willing to let God spend us in the days to come?
Let's proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the day and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Gospel reminds us of the sovereign power of rulers and the almighty power of God. In prayer we now ask a hallowing of the world in the grace of the Spirit. Let us pray for the Church throughout the world that in every place Christian communities will be faithful in prayer and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Pope asks us work together to promote peace among people and guarantee respect for human rights. We ask that God will show us the way to fulfill this bidding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As winter approaches, we thank God for our health service and for all those who work in it. We ask that it may rise again to the challenge of coping with those infected with the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that St. Edward the Confessor, patron of this church, and whose feast we celebrated last week, may inspire by this example of generosity and wisdom, the politicians negotiating jobs and trade with the EU. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On this Mission Sunday, we pray for those who preach and witness to the gospel to all nations. May we, in our own way, respond to the call that Jesus makes to sow the seed of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this Sunday's Mass intentions, for the people of the parish, for a special intention for Jean Wood and for the repose of the souls of Leonila Araneta Cruz, Sofia Gomez de Angarita, Edna and Dieter, Giles Sakayam and John Murphy. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who have asked us to pray for them for all who are sick, especially those who are lonely, housebound, in care or in hospital, and for all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this month of October, the month of the Holy Rosary, let us ask Mary, the mother of the Lord, to pray with us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let us pray for a few moments in silence for our own needs and intentions.
part unrivaled, from the rising of the sun to its setting, you protect your people. Generously grant blessing upon those whom we have placed before you this day. May your true power be revealed as we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God's bread. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Let's pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for that of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and <clears throat> it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, <clears throat> always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now, obedient to our Lord's command, let's pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us bow to each other as a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ.
let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us at Mass today. Remember, there are three Sunday Masses, 10 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. We do ask you to arrive early. Remember that there are no toilet facilities and face coverings are now mandatory. When the numbers reach 80, we actually have to close the church doors to maintain the safe distance within the church. And can we just remind everyone that there needs to be safe distancing within the church? We seem to be entering a very critical phase in this pandemic, so do be, be careful. Um, mentioned last week that the church heating has to be turned off, at least the radiators have to be turned off during Mass. So do remember that when you come to church and dress with enough warm clothing. Food bank collection continues on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. The items requested this week are tins of meat, tins of fruits, tins of rice pudding and custard, and sugar, white or brown. And thank you for the generous response last weekend. Next Saturday, the 24th of October, We'll be celebrating the belated First Communion Mass and the following Saturday, the 31st of October, the Confirmation Mass. Please keep the children and young people in your prayers. A timeline. Before the lockdown, we had planned to offer this popular Bible course to the parish, but it had to be abandoned for obvious reasons. And the course is now being offered free in an online format via live streaming on Wednesdays and it's going to be for seven sessions starting on Wednesday the 4th of November at 7 o'clock. The details of how you can join and remember it's free, do join it, see the newsletter for the details of how you can join that. And this coming Tuesday we've got our parish Zoom meeting at 8 o'clock on Tuesday so that we can get together after this long period where it's not been possible to see and talk to each other. Again, the details are in the newsletter and on the website for that. The last thing is about the planning application which Glentree Next Doors have submitted. Um, we do hope that you'll make a, a, a submission yourselves to the council about this, and there's a briefing note which we made available. That can be found on the, on the website, and the application itself can be found on the Barnet Council website, but do get in touch if you need any clarification on that. Okay, sorry, lots of notices this weekend. Things are beginning to bubble, bubble up. Okay, do take care and enjoy the week ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.